exciting. Um, under the truck, this is the passenger side. So hose comes to the frame, then I gotta come in and uh, figure out a way to get this line all the way around to the passenger, or I'm sorry, to the driver's side. Uh, I don't know if I can get any light in here. Um, anyway, so I'm mocking up a piece right here coming out from the hose. This right here, I'm gonna have to go to a T, um, but I have to find a better T because the flare fittings will go into each side, but the one that's got to go up, it, it it's not meant for one of these type fittings, so I've got to go back to Napa tomorrow and get a short one of these and uh, a new T. This is too hard of a stainless steel that I can't um, put the flare on there. The little true carbon freight tool that I have, it isn't working, but it works for this style. That's what I'm doing right now, and then I've got to figure out how to get up to the master cylinder right there. But under here, I'm going to end up putting a, uh, this is the steering box. That pink fitting right there, that's a, uh, like a female-female fitting that's coming from aft, brake lines, and I'm going to go up with it, up to the master cylinder. Just putting in the, putting in the lines right now. Not a whole lot of room under here, and... It's still on jack stands. The uh, wheels are on, but this always makes me nervous getting under here. Okay, so that olive green um, fitting coming out of the back portion of the master cylinder is the same as this. It's a 9 16 fitting. So either I need an adapter to go down to the 3 16, or I have to flare these on, which I have them. I know how to do it gotta get around to doing it so this is the fitting I was talking about kind of really hard to see in the inside so there's no way see the flare would fit in on that well it doesn't fit on there so I'm gonna have to figure something out here to make this work down below um, I bought a couple couple um, tubes of uh, brake line to uh, build my um, upper portions. So I also want to show you the update on the tires. Hang on. Can you hear the drag? So I'm not sure. I've got it backed out all the way. Okay, so I ended up taking the drums off again. sending them over to one of the shops in the local in town and they uh, put them on the lathe for me. So the first three shops I went to, they looked at me like I was a complete idiot. They, I kept telling them, drum brakes, brand new, not fitting right. Um, I think they're out of round. And they're like, all cars have disc brakes now. And I'm like, yes, this is 1963, it has drums. Then they kept asking me, well, why don't you just shift it over? Okay, dude, I don't have enough money. And uh, unless he wants to pay for it himself and give it to me, fine. Um, but then again, they all three of the first shops were like, well, we don't have a lathe anymore. All right, you're useless. Don't put the word brakes on your, your sign if all you do is part change. So this is so much better. I mean, there I haven't adjusted it. It's backed all the way out right now, but it does have a slight drag. I'm going to roll it on. So I'm, I'm very pleased with that. That's all I'm going to do for uh, Friday night. I'm going to put this to bed. So without those extra lights hanging up in the corner there, this is all I've got. It's not enough. And I have a uh, shop light going on too. Um, this garage is really not meant for working on a vehicle. It was meant for people to stow their kids' bicycles and their coolers and all the other Christmas decorations that uh, they don't put vehicles in the garages anymore. Well, I'll get back out tomorrow. Just so you know, y'all got slug bugged. It's two hits in the arm right, for you. Two on putting brake lines in. I went back down to Napa, grabbed a couple more um, sticks here so that I can rebend because they didn't like what I was doing. And I went to Pet Boys over in Hampton. <laughs> let me let me tell you what. Living in Newport News area of Virginia, it's um, jokingly called Newport Nom because you have to wear body armor in some of those neighborhoods. Going out in Pet Boys in Hampton, which is uh, just before you get um, over to Norfolk, it's a bad neighborhood. 
And uh, I walked in there and I was like, oh, I probably shouldn't be in this neighborhood. But uh, you know what? It's fine. There were drunk people walking around. It's 22 degrees outside and there were drunk people and high people walking around outside. No coats, nothing. Just acting weird. So that's the reason why I was like, I probably shouldn't be in that neighborhood. All right. So let me get back underneath the truck. And uh, as you can see, I really don't have a whole lot of room here. Um, this garage is not meant for working. But uh, anyway, let me get All back right, This section of brake line is going to go from passenger side over to the driver side across the uh, cross member right below where the uh, flywheel is. So I just flared this fitting. It's been, gosh, I could, I could probably say about 15 years since I had to do any flaring. Not bad, double flare. Got a little bit of a burr in there, but I can't do much about that right now. Anyway, I'll go install this. All right, master cylinder is not um, bench bled yet. Um, I've only got it in place so I can do the uh, line running and um, also to uh, check a couple other things. So uh, the forward section here is going to the aft lines and then the aft one here is going to the forward lines. So um, I am not the best at bending tube. It, <laughs> Of all the hydraulic jobs that I've ever done, it is not my favorite, so, um, yeah. All right, so that's, uh, that's the massive cylinder. Let me climb underneath and I'll show you what okay, I did. Okay, that's from the aft. Right there is the, uh, coming down from the, uh, um, rear. Pull this up. Had to, uh, connect it here because this line was another four inches long and it would have put the connection right in here. This is just some chafing gear. Okay, underneath. All right, this one here is the uh, aft line. I'm gonna put a, a clamp in there. So a forward line here just meets up at a T, comes across and comes from right there. So going up. You know, it's really hard to see. This is the emergency cable. This right here, this black thing, is the um, clutch bar. So I wanted to make sure that that wasn't in the way of the lines going up. Okay, I'm going to show you on paper how it used to look. Here on the single master cylinder, it came down and went into a four-way distribution block. And one went straight to the uh, drive front wheel and then the passenger front wheel, and then one line came aft and then split off to go to the rear wheels. That was the old single master cylinder setup. So I still have disc brake, or I'm sorry, I still have drum brakes. I can't afford to do disc yet. And I know this will change when the um, disc brake system gets installed on the new master cylinder, but uh, really what I did is I just separated the two. So I've got two portions of the master cylinder now. This one that's on the rear, it's coming forward to the front wheels. And the one that's on the front side of the master cylinder is coming down, not intersecting at all. It's just going right on past and it goes to the rear wheels. So that's how I'm running it right now. All right, folks, that's it for 2017. I'll bring you back in 18 and uh, we'll get these uh, brakes all bled out. Master cylinder bench bled, put back on. Let's uh, get the um, travel distance for that push rod and Let's get a move on on the truck. I really hope to get it driving by, by springtime. All right, y'all take care. Be careful tonight. See you later.